All right, continuing our study, we get the other videos as we're looking at God, all about God. God exists. Atheism solves no problems. Their theory only multiplies unsolved mysteries. What has atheism ever done for the world? They never built a hospital. They never come up with with a solution or or, or a, a a aid. We're living in a day an age today that science is doing things, and you know what? Science is giving us more troubles and more problems. That, you know, we we solved the food problems and all that. You've gone from what is natural to I don't even know what you're putting in the food, and you got all kinds of cancers. Science does not solve major problems. What is a major problem? Death. Science has never solved it. What's a major problem? Sin. Science will not stop sin. What's a major problem? Being born into a world of trouble, as Job says, a problem is to be as a, as, a, as a sparks flying up. Science ain't going to solve problems. They only make it more and make you pay more for taxes because the government is paying for it. If a man, if a cure was for cancer was to be found, man will still die of another disease. Tomorrow you may open up the newspaper, turn the news, cure for cancer. 100%. No more cancer. God will give us other things. He'll give us an earthquake, give us a sinkhole, give us a flooding. Give us an, uh, what? How many other ways can you die? For the wages of sin is death. You may find a cure for cancer, but you won't find a cure for sin. Starvation is happening right now. And past employers that I worked for, all the food that we threw out into the dumpster and locked the dumpster. And then we say, oh, we want everybody to have a meal. Bull. You're a liar. I can picture plenty of things what you're going to do with that food instead of throw it out. Yeah, but no one blames the scientists for no answers. Oh, this storm came out. Why is it God's fault? Why is it God? God did this. Why did he do this? Why did God allow this happen? Why don't you blame the scientists for not doing anything? How come it became a big joke? Oh, we got a pill for, for heart attack with a quite weird side effect. Why don't we get out there and say, hey, that was a failure? No, we put it on the market and we sell it and put it on a race car. That's not what the drug was designed for. Atheism solves no problem. You go in with a blindfold and then, you know, everything. No. The blindfold is, is, is not natural. They don't have an answer for all the kids that have been shooting everybody in the school and all the problems because there's no solution. They are the problem. You've been teaching kids all these years that, you know, we come from apes, we're, we're humans, and that, you know, act like an animal. Okay, they're doing it. Don't go cry, baby. And stop it. You raise those kids just like that, now you suffer the consequences. That's what you've been teaching the kids. You've been teaching them the theory of evolution. Now evolution is in practice. Live with it. What man cannot do, God does. I've heard many a stories where a cancer was cured without medicine. 
I have heard many of the testimony of God doing something for someone's life without man involved. Man has no solutions to problems. Man, in his best state, doesn't even know why he dies. A guy goes to college, learns all he needs to learn, gets a diploma on the wall, and writes on a death certificate, death by heart attack. You don't know. You wasted all your money. <coughs> death by cancer. You blew it. Death hit by a Mack truck. You, you, you blew it. You blew it. Death by natural causes. No, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And I don't have a diploma. And I just told you what, what causes death. It's been there the whole time. God gives man an answer to death. That answer for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That is the answer to death. Man brought sin and death into his life. Genesis 3. God gave him eternal life offering. All you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. If you reject it, you will die and go to hell. Atheism is a giant doubt. It ends in darkness and disaster and despair. There is no hope for atheists at all. <laughs> To the Chinese and the Russians, it is communism. An atheistic nation, as this nation is turning to. The torturing of Christians, those who will not walk in their way. If America continues the way she's continuing, it will be torture for Christians who will not walk in the socialism of America that is now here. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 1-1 is the answer. God the creator. Hebrews 11-6. I have the answers. We got vast unemployment. I've got the answers. Rip out all those single lights and put people there to direct the traffic. And then you don't have to worry about your carbon footprint when you've been sitting there and there's no one been going through the intersection while you're still at the red light. Hebrews 11.6 But without faith it is impossible to please him, God, for he, that's you and me, that cometh to God, must believe that he is. That's not an atheist. So you cannot please God. And they say, oh, they don't believe in God. They have a God, small G-O-D, somewhere. You, you sit an atheist down for about an hour, two hours, you will find out somewhere in his life he has a God. It's not the God of the Bible, but he has a God. You've got to have faith in something. You couldn't live without faith. You get in your car, you're going to go. You have faith when you turn that key, the car is going to start.
Belief is the key to God. You've got to at least acknowledge God some way, somehow. Now, he may not be God of the Bible yet. What about the heathen? And that, if, they, if they look to the heavens and realize that there is a creating being, there is a creator, not science, not nothing, but somehow there is someone in charge of the whole thing, that light will bring more light from God. The heathen that you worry about are, you know, are in the are in the colleges in the public school system teaching everybody that there is no God. That's the heathen. But when the man has light from God and he receives that light to believe, well, as it read again, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. If you believe in God. God will show you more light because you believe in him. If you refuse to believe in him, he's not going to show you nothing. He's not obligated. Man from God, the creator, has a free will. You either can believe or you can disbelieve. How about that? Well, the atheistic God, the communism God, is you have to. When those Pharisees and Sadducees dealt with the apostles, you have to. Shut up. And God turned to Peter and James and said, hey, you're to preach my word. Peter and James are left with either we can do it or we may not do it. And they chose to do it. God exists in Hebrews chapter 11. You've got to have some kind of belief in him. In order for him to work in your life. Now people come to you and say, well, how come God hasn't done anything in my life? And then they'll tell you, oh, I don't believe in God. Hebrews 11.6. The very part of this thing we've been talking about is the existence of God. There is God. The Bible takes that for a granted fact. There is no question to it. Only man will question it. And as a result from questioning God and turning the other way, you have atheism, you have agnostic, and you have science to fill in the gaps. Well, I'll tell you what science has done. Science has developed and made raw materials so you can make a gun and make gunpowder and you can shoot each other. And some of you people do not like that talk. But it is so. God make a gun? Why was a gun made? What was the sole purpose of that gun? What was the sole purpose of a sword? To kill. David said, let me fall in the hands of the Lord, for he, he is merciful, he is great, he is kind, but let me not fall in the hands of man, for he is cruel, he is rude, he is uh, unmerciful. The existence of God means you have to believe. You say we have a free will. That's right. But one day, you will believe in God. At the great white throne judgment, as you're standing in front of that God, you'd refuse to believe in. Free will today. And according to Hebrews 11.6, if you believe in God... God will show you more light because it says he is rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You know, you can start off as a little child, look to the heavens and all that, and say, wow, that's, who made that? And you know, God's obligated to answer you. 
and he'll speak down. He'll say something else. Maybe God made, I made that. You look back up at the heavens and say, you mean it wasn't this evolution? And if your heart is sincere, God will speak back. No, it wasn't evolution. As you keep on seeking God and believing God with the revelation he told you, the more light you get. That light will stop when you, oh, no, I don't believe that. That is the existence of God we have been studying all the way through. It is granted for somebody, well, show, you know, I don't believe in God. Show me, you know, proof. Well, show me proof that you, you, you are who you are. He'll pull out of his wallet an ID. Oh, you open up your Bible and say, well, this is the ID of God. Then a man who does not have faith, who has not obeyed what God told him to do, will start telling you what the things in the Bible say, where you are saved, born again, love the Lord, do what the Lord tells you, and the Lord has shown you light in the Scriptures. Here's somebody who will tell you what the Bible doesn't say. And which he probably got out of a book, or probably got out of a professor, or some, somebody somewhere along the line started all these Bible. You know, where, where did all the animals come from? And where did Cain get his wife? And there's, you know, it's. There's a whole list of Bible contradictions. They're published, they're passed out. So you can avoid the Bible. The main question is in your life today is. Let me say, God is real, the Bible says it, and you have a free will to say, I believe it or I don't believe it. And if you don't believe it, we've seen through our studies, go back through it, God calls you a fool. And God has no pleasures in the fool. And then when you believe what God has told you, and when someone takes a Bible and is witnessing to you about Jesus Christ and they show you about hell, you believe it. Okay, there's a, I believe hell. Next, you are a sinner going to hell. I have dealt with people and have stopped there because they're not a sinner. Yes, you are. And you fight with them. No, I've done nothing wrong. They cannot acknowledge that they have done wrong and they have sinned. You stop there. The light is stopped. You can't go any further. And I don't go into this easy prayerism and all that and just say this prayer and raise your hand. You got to deal with hell. He's got to believe that. He's got to believe that he's a sinner. All right, I'm a sinner. More like Jesus Christ was born of Mary, a virgin. He's got to believe that. He's got to believe in the virgin birth of Jesus because there's other. And then you to go right there. You keep going until the light is shown that where he wants to receive that light. And let me show you as we close John chapter 3 about that, about salvation. John chapter 3, verse 16. I'll show you the salvation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Do you believe the Lord Jesus Christ came to give you life? Yeah, I guess is what you're reading. That whosoever believeth in him. This is where you tell the guy you want to put your name in there, whosoever. If you don't, put your name whosoever in Revelation 20. Do you believe that Jesus Christ came and died for your sins? That whosoever should, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you realize that you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ of God's gift to you, that you can believe it right now, and that you can have eternal life? For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world. Listen, Jesus didn't come to, to, to put you into hell. Luke 19.10 says he's come to save. 
He came to save you. But the world through him might be saved. Saved from what? Remember hell? Remember I talked to you about hell? That's what the saving is talking about. That you won't go to hell. You will not have an everlasting life in hell if you believe in him. He that believeth on him is not condemned. You will not be burning in hell. You will not be found guilty. Well, I don't believe that. How can God? No, I don't believe it. Then you don't go no further. The faith is stopped. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Listen, I'm talking to you right now about Jesus Christ. You are going to hell right now. If you were to die right now, you would be burning in hell without the belief in Jesus Christ. I don't believe that. That's 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 a bad God. That's, and you stop. I'm not doing no Romans road. Just follow right along and, and say this prayer. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You have never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. You are condemned and you will burn in hell. Believe that? Yeah. And this is a condemnation that light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. If a man turns from God at this point. He does not get any more light from God. When you open the Bible and you show them the scriptures, whether you're in Romans or whether you're in John, whether you, whatever you're dealing with, maybe Galatians because he's a because he's turned to the law or something like that. When when they stop at the light, when they refuse to believe on God for their answer, they return to darkness. You know what darkness is as far as what we've been studying? It's that big bang. Because according to them, there was nothing ever, nothing to be ever to be nothing. So that means it was darkness. The, the evolution comes from verse 19. This is the condemnation. Light has come in the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. That is the source of the big bang. No light, no God. Burning hell. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. An atheist hates the light. He does not want to be revealed for his sins. Sodomites hate the light. Because they enjoy their sins. Romans chapter 1. Read the last verse. Neither cometh to the light. I am not going further. I'm not going to believe in God. I don't want to have anything to do with that Bible. Least his deeds should be reproved. Don't you tell me about sin. Don't you tell me. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. Look at that. He that cometh to the truth, he got more light. That his deeds may be made manifest. Oh, wow. I mean, I am that bad of a person. I am a sinner. That they are wrought in God. And the only way I can get out of that, the only thing I can do for my soul is trust God. Verse 36. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abiding on him. Listen, that's that's the Hebrews 11.6. You, you can't deal with somebody who doesn't believe in God. Why go any further? Science doesn't believe this. But you know what John chapter 3 did? It took God for granted. You see anywhere in those, those things, oh, see, God is the math, you know, try to prove God's, you know, it didn't. It showed that God was there and always been there and will be there. That's the existence of God. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, 
I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art.